Whether you've had hallucination-inducing psychedelic magic mushrooms many times, once, or never at all, you may have wondered what causes such interesting effects. There are other hallucination-inducing drugs, but there just isn't mushroom in this video. Magic mushrooms refer to more than 200 species of fungi that can have some powerful effects when ingested, due to a certain molecule they contain called psilocybin. But how does psilocybin actually work? The key cells in your brain are neurons. To pass a signal from one neuron to another neuron, messenger molecules called neurotransmitters diffuse across this space called a synapse. Once the neurotransmitters reach the next neuron, they bind to something called receptors. This causes a cascade of different reactions in the next neuron. There are lots of different neurotransmitters, but one of the big dogs of the neurotransmitter crew is serotonin, which binds to one of seven types of serotonin receptors, 5-HT1 through to 5-HT7, but mostly binds to a subversion of this one called 5-HT2A. HT stands for hydroxytryptamine. <laughs> trip. Now back to psilocybin. Once in your body, psilocybin, which looks like this, is rapidly broken down to produce psilocin, which looks like this. Psilocin has a really similar structure to serotonin, so readily binds to the serotonin receptor, causing increased levels of those serotonin-like cascading reactions. These cascading reactions can either excite neurons to be more active or inhibit neurons to be less active. This is where it ventures into unconfirmed territory, but scientists believe that psilocybin amplifies the inhibitory cascade reactions, reducing brain activity in certain areas. Why do we think this? From amazing studies where psilocybin is given during fMRI scans. fMRI stands for Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging. This video is about how fMRI works, but essentially it shows which parts of the brain are more or less active by measuring increased or decreased blood flow. So in one study, healthy volunteers were injected with psilocybin whilst their brains were scanned, and the results showed decreased brain activity in these blue parts which are some of the key connector hubs in your brain. This suggests that the hallucinogenic effects of psilocybin are caused by a decrease in brain activity, which enables the state of unstrained cognition observed during hallucinations. This means that the hard work your brain is usually doing to establish and interpret reality is diminished by psilocybin enabling hallucinations. But it's not that simple. While psilocybin has been shown to decrease brain activity, there's also evidence it increases brain connectivity. What's the difference? Brain activity is the extent to which neurons are firing. Brain connectivity looks at which parts of the brain that are structurally segregated are statistically more likely to fire together. So while psilocybin appears to decrease brain activity overall, it also seems to increase brain connectivity, increasing the likelihood of structurally separate parts of the brain to fire at the same time. This was demonstrated in a paper with these beautiful rings that visualize the connectivity of the brain for people given a placebo versus psilocybin. You can see the drastically increased number of connections for those injected with psilocybin. It's understandable that as your brain tries to grapple and interpret the onslaught of sensations in the world, a drug which decreases brain activity but increases brain connectivity means all of that information may not be interpreted correctly. Our brains can generate thoughts and images internally, but the signal that those thoughts or images originated internally may get lost, so your brain will create external circumstances to explain them. But psilocybin doesn't end there. In another amazing study, psilocybin was given to 19 patients with treatment-resistant depression, and the result were pretty curious. They showed a decrease in blood flow to an area of the brain called the amygdala, and the greater the decrease in blood flow to the amygdala, the greater the participants decrease in depressive symptoms. Psilocybin is a powerful and potentially dangerous drug that can cause very bad side effects like panic attacks and paranoia, but could potentially be prescribed by a doctor in the same way as antibiotics, under the right circumstances to appropriate patients at the correct dosage. There is some stigma around this research, but what actually matters is whether psilocybin can effectively improve the lives of people suffering with depression. And there seems to be some preliminary evidence that it may do so, so it seems reasonable that such hypotheses should be further interrogated. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next one.